What's going on guys? Welcome to your 19th Java tutorial. Again with me, Travis. What we're going to learn about in today's tutorial is something called an array and what that will allow us to do, how it can save us some time typing out all these things. Um, but before we jump into it, I want to address one comment that I got because basically we're going to cover uh, the answer to that comment in this tutorial and the next tutorial. So let's just jump over to the to uh, YouTube here. As you can see here, it says, Hi, my friend and I wrote a program that chooses five random numbers, one through 100, and if all those numbers can be divided by two, you won. I did that basically within an if, inside an if, is there an easier way to do it? The answer is yes. And we first need to start out by learning arrays and what that can do. So let's go into our class and delete everything. Um, what we're going to need for this program is just a random r, set this equal to a new random, just kind of a review there. And then what we can do is we can say int number one, we can set this equal to r uh, next int, and we want to choose one through 100, so we're going to put 100 in there, and we're going to add one so it starts at position one instead of zero. Again, kind of a root review if you guys are lost. You know, check out, I think, the previous tutorials when we did uh, the random uh, the random uh, tutorial chaos stuff. Um, but as you can see, we can set up something like this, and it takes five lines of code. And we're just like, holy crap, that's way too many lines of code if I have to type this, copy and paste, and then change that stuff. There's something easier. It's called an array. Um, since all these numbers are pretty much the same, they're all int values, and don't even worry about actually what they're defined as right now. But they're all kind of doing the same thing. Um, you know, they're all numbers. They're all going to be random eventually. They're all of the same sort of thing. So we don't want to actually have a new, you know, variable name for each one of these. Typing out int, num3, num whatever. Because um, think if we had a hundred numbers that we were choosing from instead of five numbers to start with. Uh, that would take too long. We have to copy and paste and change all that stuff. Now, one of the most beautiful things we can do is use an array. Now, what we can do is we can set up an array by just basically defining our number, and we're going to delete that for now. What we can do is we can put on some brackets here as such. These brackets basically tell our program or tell Java that this num variable, it's going to be of array type. Now, you guys probably don't know what an array is because I haven't explained it yet. But the easiest way to explain it is just, just to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up something here. We're going to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so there's five positions within our array. Now what we can do is we're just going to do a quick system printout. Bam. Looking good. For example, now we can just reference which position in our array that we want to display. So we're going to say position 3. Um, again, it's referring to our variable, which is an int, and it's an array because we have these brackets here, and it's looking for position 3. So position 3 is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's also going to be equal to 3. So when we run this, as you can see, we get a system print out of 3. So that's pretty nifty, right? Um, instead of typing out a hundred different variable names, all ints being like int num1, int num2, uh, we can set it equal to something like this. Now, these can be any values you want as long as they're int values. And we have, you know, now if we run it again, we're going to have a, a zero printed to our compiler down here. Um, because again, position three, it starts at zero, one, two, three, so we're going to get this number printed out on the screen. You can take my word for it or run it yourself, but that's kind of how array works. But the thing that you need to remember with arrays, because again, we're speaking with a computer, and they're weird. Um, when they count, they start at position zero always. So you might get confused sometimes working with arrays. You might be off by one thinking that this is the third position because humans count one, two, three. But again, computers, they always count by zero are starting with zero. So zero, one, two, three. So this is our third position, which we're referring to here. If we wanted to re refer to this position, we'd have to say num zero. So uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. 
Um, another way we can set up arrays is int and then num and uh, copy this. So as you can see, it's still saying it's an int. Uh, let's try and get our fourth position, which will be four. Same kind of concept. We're just putting the the array above our or right after our int value. You know, so far you can kind of see how arrays will be beneficial. And instead of setting up a hundred different int variables, we can set up one int array that holds a hundred integer places within the array. But again, if we wanted to have an array that holds a hundred places, like with this type of setup, we'd have to type it out, you know, like this, giving it an initial value of all zero, zero uh, values within each position. And then we'd have to count our commas and zeros, and we'd be like, what in the world? Uh, I lost track around 80. I'm going to have to count this again, make sure I have 100 positions. Um, so as you can see, that's kind of a downfall. But there's one last way that we can set up an array. And you're going to want to use this way when we set up an array uh, with a large number of positions. Or if you guys just get in the habit of doing it, it's probably the best way to set it up. What we're going to do is we're going to say a new int value, or an int array, I should say. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it how many places we want within our array. So if we want to have 100 places, we're going to type 100 here. So what that's going to do is it's going to set up a new integer array called num for us that has 100 places. Again, 100 places starting at 0 and ending at 99. But let's just go back to our original example. So if we wanted to have an int array with five positions, this is basically the same as setting it up how we just did it. So I'm just going to leave a comment. Um, same as equal to uh, one, you know. Um, this, this setup here using the new command and uh, this int array with five places is the same as setting it equal to this. So again, we have five places, place position 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. But the thing that, again, this is the trickiest thing about arrays, is you just want to you know, refer to position 5 here in our system printout. Uh, just by nature, you see this, how we set it up. You're, gonna, you're like, OK, maybe I can put a 5 here. If we run it, we're going to get an error. As you can see down here, we have an error message. Um, so that's not good. But if we refer to position 4 in our system, out print, uh, we're going to get a 0, as you can see down here. So basically, uh, again, those are the key concepts that you want to remember. We're setting up an array this way. We're going to have five positions. So again, that those positions are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, five numbers. And this is the, the last number within our array is position 4. Just as you know, if we had a array with a hundred places, this would be the last one that we could refer to without getting an error. So just kind of work with the array a little bit and get familiar with it. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you guys how we can set up some place values for each one of these positions very quickly. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you then. Have a good one.